All right, well, I guess let's get started with the uh, Bellwork question that leads directly into the lecture. What does it take to be considered alive? What do you think they're children? So let's look at these seven properties of uh, being living organisms. Obviously, we're going to fill out these notes. Organisms are considered to be blanking things. Mm -hmm. Living things. Organisms are considered to be living things. In order to be considered a living, this is that word for being a living thing, our special living thing word. Yes, organism. In order to be considered a living organism, blank properties must be met. I know you can count. Look on that sheet and you will see it is seven. Seven. Seven characteristics must be met. I'm just going to go ahead and give them to you right here, right now. First, all living things are made out of cells, so they have what's called a cellular organization. They're organized of cells, so they're called a cellular organization. All living things make more of themselves. That's called reproduction. All living things have a uh, heredity. They, they can pass down their genes, traits, some kind of genetic hereditary material. So they, uh, they, they have a heredity thing going on, all living things do. All living things have a metabolism. You've probably heard of this one, like some people have a high metabolism, some people have a low metabolism. Uh, that sort of that thing is generally uh, something to do with the chemical reactions in your body. We'll talk more about that later. We even have a whole metabolism unit to do this year. Get excited for that. All living things have a responsiveness. What are they responding to? It's the E word. Go on. Yeah, the environment. All living things respond to their environment. That's an I. Environment. All living things, look at how good that looks. All living things have a responsiveness. They respond to their environment. They respond to what's going on around them. All living things, all organisms, perform what's called homeostasis. And you use your science words for this one. You got homeo, that's one of our words. Stasis is like static. So that's all keeping things the same, homeostasis. All living things have homeostasis. Big word, scary word. You might want to practice saying it a few times. That's homeostasis. And the final one, all living things grow and develop. You know, um, and not just grow. Like, I mean, you're much larger than you were originally, but not just larger, you have also changed. You've gone through probably like puberty and other stuff like that. So all living things, they grow. They develop, they become different, they have a life cycle. So let's hit up these notes all nice and note style. Organisms must be composed of, this is our first category of life. What do they have to be made out of? That's right, cells. All living things must be made out of cells because blanks are the basic unit of structure and blank of living things. Blanks. That's right, cells, capital letter, because they're starting to sense, are the basic unit of structure and, so this is not just like they're made out of it, but the cells actually do stuff too. So cells, they're the basic unit of structure and function, function, there we yeah. go, function. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function of living things. All cells come from pre-existing Cells. All cells come from pre-existing cells. That's good. They are blankroscopic. This refers to how large they are, the cells. They are microscopic. That's right, they're teeny, teeny micro, meaning super duper small. Scopic, meaning you need some kind of scope to see them. They're microscopic. Some blanks are unicellular, meaning they're composed of blank cell. Some, that's our word for all living things. Very good. Organisms, again, so some organisms 
are unicellular, meaning they're only composed of how many cell? Notice, no S on the end. That's right, one and only one. Blanks are composed of tiny subunits called blanks. Blanks are composed of tiny subunits. This whole paragraph is all about mm -hmm, the cell. So here it is, the cell. And all cells are composed of teeny tiny subunits called mm, organelles. Those are like, uh, you know, like we have organs, right? Little components that make up our body, they can combine to make organ systems. And together, all those organ systems make up the entire organism, right? Right. Cells are the same way. They're made of tiny little subunits called organelles. And those organelles are made of tiny little molecules, made of tiny little atoms. Think about freshman science. Going back in time to all that same type of thing. Very good job, Dragon. All right, blanks make more of themselves. They make more of themselves. What's their blanks? They make more of those are living things. Yes, organisms. Organisms, they make blank of themselves. What word do you think makes sense there? Organisms make babies of themselves. <laughs> yes, they make more of themselves. Organisms make more of themselves. They do this in a process called, keep it real general and basic, not everybody mates and stuff. It's just plain old reproduction. All living things make more of themselves in a process called reproduction. During reproduction, blank material from the blanks are inherited by the blank. Blank material, what's the stuff that gets sent down as a result of reproduction? It's inside those little gamete cells that, that are used for reproduction quite often. Mm-hmm, genetic material, genetic material. Usually, usually uh, DNA, more on that in a few minutes. Genetic material from the who to the what? Yes, from the parents to the offspring. And that's that whole heredity deal, right? We say that the offspring inherits the genetic material from the parents. So the parents send that genetic material, it is inherited by the offspring. Spring. In order for a species to survive, blank is the most important task. We talked about this the other day. How individuals, you need like food, water, shelter, stuff like that. However, all species, the whole group, all that really needs is to uh, make more of itself. And that way the species can perpetuate on and on, on and on and on. So all living things need uh, reproduction as a species, as a group in order for that group to still be a thing. Case in point, my friend and yours, Ziluna Mouth. Look at how pretty she is. You'll notice over here though, in the Luna Mouth like area face, there is no mouth holes. No mouth holes. There's no mouth on the Luna Mouth. Little recap on moths. Remember they start as like little friendly caterpillars and they're like ma, 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 and then they turn into uh, a moth or a butterfly through the metamorphosis and the cocoon and that sort of thing. But the deal is the caterpillar eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and, eats and, eats and then goes through metamorphosis. The luna moth comes out, lives for one, maybe two days max. No mouth, can't eat, can't drink water. Its sole purpose is just to make more luna moth caterpillar things flying around. Just make more babies. That's the entire point of the Luna Moth. So yeah, just a little evidence of how reproduction is a crucial thing for the species in ways that uh, most people don't even understand. Here. Living things all share a specific blanket code. A blanket code has to do with that material that gets passed on from the paragraph above. Yeah, the material starts with the letter G, that's right. Geornetic. Living things all share a specific genetic code. This code is passed down during the what? Yeah, during the mechamore of itself, during the reproduction. Genetic code is passed down during reproduction. For almost all organisms, the genetic... This is how it's like, you know, in the cereal box, you have like the ring to figure it out. Probably not. not all there. Code, yes, code, very good. For almost all organisms, the genetic code, it's coded. It's not just like this trait, this trait. Like it's, it's encoded. It's in a weird language. We're going to learn it later, so get excited, children. 
but it's inside this molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid. You probably think of it as mm -hmm, DNA. Here's a pretty full picture of DNA. Uh, this is an artist's rendition. This is not really what DNA looks like, but look at look at pretty deoxyribonucleic acid DNA. If anybody remembers that big long word later, bonus points for you. Blanks, breakdown, and blank molecules. Blanks, this is our word for living things again. That's right. Organisms. Organisms break down and... What's the opposite of breaking down? Yaw. Build. They break down and they build up molecules inside their bodies. And if, even if it's unicellular inside there. This is the thing that all living things are made out of. Scales. This happens as a result of Blanca-Call reactions as a car. What are the Blanca-Call reactions? You learned about Blanca-Call reactions last year. Some of you had to balance the Blanca-Call reactions, had to look at the reactants and the products of the, yeah, the chemical reactions. The sum, no such S-U-M as in the what? Mm-hmm, that's total. The total, if you add up all the chemical reactions, the sum total of these chemical mm -hmm, reactions is called an organism's what? This is all the reactions happening in the body. Some people have a fast blank, some people have a slow blank, it's all about the rate of those chemical reactions. It's the metabolism. All living things, all living things, uh, perform chemical reactions. The sum of all these chemical reactions is metabolism. The faster the yeah, metabolism again, the faster the metabolism, the faster these what's metabolism really? Other than this line that scrawled on there. Yeah, the reactions. The faster the, rate, the metabolism, the faster the reactions occur. All right, so not just, that's why some people need to eat a lot, because uh, it's reactions, chemical reactions. Like, literally, when you eat food, that's fuel for these chemical reactions. If food gets broken down, your body uses that to build more you, which is uh, really kind of cool, though. So, literally, you actually are what you eat, because your body uses what you eat to make more you. So, like, if you eat a bunch of things your body can't really use, it just kind of goes like, uh, okay, I can't really make you with this, so push it on through, I guess. But yeah, the faster the metabolism, the faster all those reactions, the more fuel you'll need to run all those reactions. Think like a car, if you're driving fast, you're driving slow, you're driving fast, you need more fuel. That's how the metabolism works. Living things require blanks and blanks for this process. They require you know, some kind of materials, some kind of reactants, some kind of physical something to put into the body. They take materials, and obviously it's going to require... It's the other reason why you need to eat, not just materials, but also, you know, energy. Yeah, you know, like when you start feeling really tired because you haven't eaten very much today. Maybe it's early in the morning and it's not lunchtime yet. But yeah, uh, you need that energy to do stuff with those materials. Obviously, materials for the reactions that happen because that's how reactions work. Anyway, organisms respond to the what around them. What's all that stuff around them in the stick bug lab? It was the box all around them. They respond to yes, the environment around them. Blanks in the environment, that's blanks to moisture, blanks to temperature, blanks to like the foliage, whatnot, cause changes to occur in the blank. That's right, changes in the environment cause changes to occur in the living thing as well. And our word for living thing is organism. Changes in the environment cause changes in the organism. Many try to go against these changes. And that is the maintaining of the biggest, craziest word of all the ones up there. Now, the one that's hardest to say starts with an H. Literally means keeping your blood the same. Mm, homeostasis. Don't be scared about saying it. Do we need to practice again, children? Homeostasis. Organisms, next paragraph, organisms need to maintain an Blank balance. This is balance on the inside, so that would be internal balance. Organisms need to maintain an internal balance. 
in order to keep conditions stable. Good example in us, body, yeah, body temperature. Most people fall in the ballpark of something around 98 point whatever. Mine's actually a little bit lower, which is exciting. Real life Patterson maybe a little bit higher because he's probably working the room a little bit more. And I'm just in here, so ha ha on him. Okay, 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 I'll get back to work. This uh, regulation, like body temperature and uh, pH and other internal conditions, is called the big H word again. You got it. Homeostasis. Homeostasis. Many organisms uh, use a great deal of blank, and it's a huge part of their metabolism to maintain that there homeostasis. That's right, they use a ton of energy ton of energy. Like think about like in the winter time, if we have like our body temperature, we want to keep it pretty stable and it's cold outside. So our body's using all these calories, using all this energy to keep your body warm. Same thing uh, in the summertime. It's a hundred degrees outside. We want to be not quite that hot. Plus your body's doing metabolism. That's ramping up the temperature. So we sweat, we expend energy. Your body goes out of its way to try and cool you down. That's homeostasis. More on that. I mean, really more on these and all the units. This is basically the introduction to all the things we're going to learn this year, guys. All the units we're going to have. Living things blank and blank. Do they get bigger? Yes, they grow. And also, they don't just grow, but they change. They look up at the top. They grow and they develop. They grow and they develop. Every even, even single celled blank go through different stages of life as they grow blanker, blank, and blank. And these are single celled things, uh, they're teensy weensy, uh, usually they grow like inside you, sometimes they make you sick. That's right children, we're talking bacteria. Even single celled bacteria go through different stages of life as they grow lar larger, as they grow larger or bigger. They make more of themselves, that's right, they reproduce. And as a big part of the growing and developing, they also, all living things, will eventually die. Kind of a bummer, but in order to be considered a living thing, it has to be able to eventually die. Which makes me think like, oh, immortals like the Highlander, maybe not actually a living thing anymore. Maybe he never dies, because he's never really alive. Existential crisis. All organisms have a specific life, right? You're born, you grow, you develop, and you die. That could look like a big old, oh, like a circle of life. So we call it a cycle. All living things have a specific life cycle. Any questions? Ask that guy in the room, because obviously I'm not really here. Yay.